Welcome back to the Mayor's Update. Uh, Mayor Stephenson, you've recently had the chance to talk with our legislators and also our transportation leaders about some of the transportation mm -hmm. needs here in Everett as well as in Snohomish County. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about those meetings and what you see as some of our most pressing transportation needs. Well, transportation infrastructure and really all infrastructure that moves people and goods, uh, some of that's by rail and obviously by air, but the focus uh, that I want to talk about is really the transportation uh, uh, needs uh, of our city, our county, and frankly the state. Uh, looking back to this last legislative session, uh, two special sessions dealing with the budget, trying to put a transportation package together, um, a lot of emotion, a lot of really divergent points of view. I think the Col Columbia River crossing which the governor was pushing for very uh, hard to uh, get that funded, uh, really became a significant stumbling block to getting a transportation package. And the package I'm talking about is really one where the legislature was going to uh, pass a transportation budget on their authority to probably add about 10 cents of gas tax to a variety of projects. Uh, across the state, the county, and obviously the city. So where we are right now is uh, the governor was up here a few weeks ago, spent the day with him looking at the Snohomish County and Everett transportation projects, among other things. Uh, S uh, Senator uh, Curtis King and Senator Eide and other uh, key leaders uh, in Olympia did a listening tour here, and they were actually here, I think, on September uh, 18th, and looked at the projects and then heard from the community about the need. Uh, and this is where I think we should go, and I think this is the governor's position as he has ex explained it to me. Uh, I think the, the, the right course of action is a modified transportation package that takes some of those uh, lightning rod issues off the table. Perhaps it's a transportation package that focuses on the economy and jobs specifically. And it identifies what those projects are that people can agree on. And if that can occur and there can be agreement between the governor's office and the legislature the governor has expressed a willingness before the year is out to bringing back the legislature for a, a special session. But he's indicated that he's not going to do that if there's not prior agreement to what is included in that and at least the principles of a transportation package uh, are in place. And I think that that's what our legislators both uh, in our county, um, and in the region and across the state are wrestling with. So uh, I'm hopeful that will occur. And now let me, uh, let me explain why and then I'll touch on the, on the projects that, that are involved for us. Uh, we're in the fight of our lives for 777X. Uh, we've answered the question about their permitting four weeks from application to con construction start. Uh, the governor is dealing with uh, fish consumption and water quality issues. The third leg of that stool is uh, transportation. I should say there's four, four legs to that stool. There's transportation and higher education, but uh, higher education, we've made good progress with Washington State, but we need a transportation package. Now, why do we need that? Why is that important? Uh, and so I now specifically talk about Everett and the surrounding areas. We have uh, significant congestion at peak times. For example, uh, in 2008, we put about a quarter of a billion dollars in improvements to I-5 through Everett from Eastmont. Made a huge difference, and it's been really a great investment. But now we've simply moved the congestion north uh, in the afternoon to the Snohomish River Bridge. So there it stops, and then it backs up. One project would use, and a very cost-effective project, would use the shoulder as a hard-running shoulder for peak hour traffic northbound in the afternoon, 
and southbound in the morning. Uh, I think it could provide tremendous relief. It's about four miles between Everett and Marysville, so you're getting about uh, eight miles of improvement for about $35 million. Now, it sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but in terms of that many miles of improvement, uh, using uh, the shoulder, it's a pretty effective way to go. Another project is a interchange at Hardison Road uh, and 526. Uh, anyone familiar with, uh, that works at Boeing or is on that freeway in the morning or the afternoon realizes that getting into the Boeing plant is sort of a one-way proposition. It's 526 to Seaway and back out the same way uh, uh, in the afternoon. A new interchange at Hardison would, would provide not only a lot of relief for the Boeing Company and its employees, but it would provide a lot of relief for the aerospace suppliers and other businesses uh, in that whole Seaway uh, commercial uh, area that uh, we enjoy out there. So that's another project we have, uh, a relatively inexpensive project as projects go, very focused on jobs, very focused on the economy. Um, a third project we have about a million and a half dollar project is a widening of three intersections uh, for freight mobility. One is at uh, West Marine View Drive and Pacific, another a couple blocks away at Pacific and Rucker, and then Rucker and 41st. Uh, these are uh, projects that would widen those intersections so truck traffic moving large Boeing parts can use those intersections without blocking traffic, basically. Even though they're doing it at night, it is a very difficult and time-consuming process. And then a fourth project, and again, we've tried to be very modest in what we've asked for, uh, very focused from a job perspective, but we have partnered with Snohomish County to continue the evolution of improvements to the westbound US-2 trestle, a trestle that's as old as a viaduct, uh, it's uh, had significant maintenance over the years. Uh, I think it's very vulnerable to a natural disaster like an earthquake. Uh, I can just, I don't even want to imagine what traffic would be like if we lost that link. And so we've continued to advance the cause of the engineering uh, and phasing in improvements on, on that uh, leg of traffic, even though it's outside the city limits. It's a lot of East County and North County workers who actually work in Everett, and we want to make sure that that link uh, is completed. There are other projects around uh, Snohomish County, uh, north of us and east of us, that improve uh, uh, Highway 9 and, and other improvements to the north. All very important, uh, but these are the ones that we've really stayed focused on and then I think there are others across the region. We need uh, continued help with some financial help for our uh, modal, multimodal uh, system for buses and uh, bus rapid transit, and that would come in part through this. And then eventually, um, the key for us, which is probably 20 years away in a phase three of uh, light rail, would get light rail to Everett, but probably not till 20, between 2030 and 2035. So it's a ways out there. So we need these improvements. And we are really not talking about putting more lanes of highway or more uh, asphalt down for that purpose, just to clog that up. What we're trying to do is make strategic investments that make the interstate work better, basically and to be able to use the shoulders as uh, a travel lane, uh, not unlike what we've done on US-2 uh, eastbound in the afternoon. So those are our major projects for uh, Everett and, and sort of the surrounding areas. And so we're very, very hopeful that the legislature will come together, collaborate, compromise, pass a package so we can begin to make these critical improvements. It'll send a tremendously positive message 
to not only Boeing, but the whole aerospace industry that we're trying to grow here. Good for jobs, good for the economy long term, and we desperately need it.